Hey, Cypher here. I was surprised by how much of an outright lie American Made is. In fact, it is basically a conspiracy theory. That is the worst thing a film can be. It pushes a narrative founded on denying evidence. For its conspiracism, I placed it as the worst history film of 2017. What a prestigious place to be! Here's a fun thing I've been running into recently from conspiracists. For those commenters who want to believe that the term conspiracy theory was made up by some three-letter agency to discredit people, you are dead wrong. And in fact, you're pushing a conspiracy theory yourself. The term has had a pejorative meaning since at least 1909, and that's in the American Historical Review, no less which is the highest academic journal in the American history profession. Yeah, historians have been annoyed by conspiracists for over a century, and you'd do well to actually research something rather than deny evidence based purely on your own incredulity in order to tell some imagined narrative. Conspiracists aren't welcome here because they refuse to analyze history, which is the entire purpose of this channel. Anyways, the movie is trying to tell us that this well-known drug smuggler named Barry Seal was secretly working for the CIA the entire time. You're CIA. Shh. <laughs> I'll get to why this is a conspiracy theory and how harmful a lie it's selling later in the review, but let's just say he did not work for the CIA. It's the crux of the film, and it is a complete falsehood made worse by its implications. Barry Seal was perhaps the biggest drug smuggler during the crack epidemic. He got more cocaine into America than any other smuggler. This is well known. In fact, his DEA handler wrote basically the definitive book on Seal's life and makes no mention of working for the CIA, something that this movie makes out to be the crucial aspect of Seal's life. And the CIA turned to me. Schaefer? Seal did fly secret operations in the 1950s. Not for the CIA, at least directly, but all of that had certainly ended by the time he began flying for the TWA in 1964. The CIA even did an investigation into the allegation that Seal was working for them, trying to find anything to corroborate such a claim. And the closest they got was finding that the airport Seal flew out of once did some maintenance on equipment the CIA owned. That's it. Seriously, that's the closest connection they could establish. Notice I did say the DEA, as in the Drug Enforcement Administration. After a decade of drug running, Seal was caught by the DEA. He struck a plea bargain to equip his plane with surveillance equipment in order to capture evidence of drug cartel activity. The installation was actually done by the CIA as part of a joint operation with the DEA, but that was essentially all they did. Seal was accidentally outed by the Wall Street Journal, so he was assassinated by a motorcyclist while driving his car from the airport. It sounds like an excellent story alone, but leave it to Hollywood to be incapable of telling a good story. So here is a brief list of the most egregious lies the film perpetrates. Seal did not quit Transworld Airlines to join the CIA. First, he obviously didn't work for the CIA. Second, he was fired. What he was fired over would have made for a good story in and of itself. He was fired for trying to smuggle plastic explosives into Mexico for a cartel while on sick leave. But the film makes a big deal out of him quitting, for some reason. It shows him doing these dangerous surveillance runs of communist encampments with a CIA-provided plane. Obviously that's incorrect. I don't even know where they could have come up with such a dumb idea for the film, given we had U-2 planes and satellite surveillance, all of which were far more effective than some dimwit flying low to take pictures. That would be awfully counterproductive for the CIA to even have attempted. There is no evidence of Seal ever meeting with Noriega. Noriega shows up again to help Seal for some reason, but obviously that didn't happen. Seal did not meet Pablo Escobar. This whole scene of him being kidnapped and coerced into smuggling is false. He was smuggling drugs since at least 1976, and his ex-wife says a year earlier than that. It was just a steady workup from marijuana to cocaine through the cartels. It wasn't some quick little thing, but a long criminal career. 
The movie shows Seal being caught during a raid while meeting with the Medellin cartel. That's a nope. But this is supposed to be where the film version makes the CIA connected with drug smuggling because it shows them bailing Seal out of a Colombian prison, none of which happened. The movie shows the CIA giving Seal an entire airport. This whole airport? Yeah. Congratulations. This is really dumb, considering that it's supposed to be the Mina Municipal Airport. It's right there in the name, municipal, as in the municipality owns it. It's not a private airport. Duh. As a result of the new airport, they have SEAL smuggle weapons to Nicaraguan Contras, and later even smuggles Contras into the United States for training at the Mina Municipal Airport. What is up with conspiracists and airports? Good lord that's dumb. I mean, someone in Mina would have noticed a buildup of military equipment at their municipal airport. It shows Seal bringing his wife to meet the cartel leadership. His wives were never involved in his drug smuggling, and this is slanderous to put it on film. Really? Really? The movie is going to go so far as to show Seal crashing into an American suburb? That would be awfully big news, and no. Well, that's for the damage. And, uh, here's a little something extra for your sister. Hey, little darling. And your bike. Paying off some kid wouldn't have stopped a national, newsworthy story from being published. Who honestly believes that this could even happen? It shows his brother-in-law being killed by the cartel. That didn't happen. In fact, the cartel never killed for Barry Seal, although they did kill Barry Seal. Where the hell you think you're going, big fella? This guy's fatter than fuck. Either I fly the big fella, or I fly your product. Ha! <laughs> the movie apparently didn't even bother to look at pictures of Barry Seal. The dude was so fat that he was known as El Gordo among the cartel. Come on! Okay, so this is where the movie is openly conspiratorial towards the end, to the point of maliciousness. Dad, anything which can link us with him, you put it in the burn bag, and then what do you do with it? Burn it. You burn it. It implies that the CIA burnt all evidence of this happening, a key part of any conspiracy theory. You know, the truth is out there, man! They just don't want you to find it! Anyone who tries to engage with these fools is met with that typical drivel, but the movie builds from this. I mean, it does show this dumb graphic where it tries to show that the CIA was basically allowing SEAL to smuggle drugs while somehow aiding the Contras fairly early in the movie. For anyone familiar with the stupid lengths people go to make this conspiracy theory, you'd be flinching, but it isn't obvious yet. No, it's when it starts looping in presidents. First, it shows Seal being released by Bill Clinton, who was governor of Arkansas at the time. I have Governor Clinton on the line. What do you need, Bill? No, he's free to go, boys. What the hell? You then Seal is taken to the White House, where he meets good old W, as in Bush Jr. I've been known to fly some. Me too. Air National Guard. So we already have two future presidents who are supposedly in on the conspiracy. But the movie goes further and blames Reagan for leaking Seal's name, rather than the Wall Street Journal. It's motherfuckers! That's your fucking face, Barry! Because that rag could never report anything so negligent. Not ever. They would never be responsible for the death of an American. No, no. It had to be the president. Except, even a cursory understanding of the subject would show that the broadcast that the movie shows was after Seal's death. But what if Reagan could time travel, man? You can't prove he didn't! Flat Earth confirmed! <laughs> this is all part of a conspiracy theory the movie is trying to get us to believe. And it is much more harmful than you would initially think. After all, Conspiracism inspires violence. This is part of a conspiracy theory that was first published in the San Jose Mercury News in 1996. 
A series of articles called The Dark Alliance alleged that the CIA was deeply involved in the crack cocaine epidemic. It even pushed the idea that the CIA was doing this to make black neighborhoods more compliant in America. People, of course, started protests and even blocked Langley. The CIA's director, as one historian puts it, took the unprecedented step of confronting the angry skeptics in person. This did have a good effect in making the CIA admit that there had been some involvement with anti-communist smugglers. The CIA was basically forced to release its own investigation into the subject to the people. But that did not include some insidious plot to subjugate black people. No, it was just that there were some passing knowledge of the Central American cartels and their influence in the region. Nothing more than that. But that doesn't mean that people took that molehill and made a mountain of it. That's the nature of conspiracists, after all. They take one seed of doubt and tell us they discovered a forest. So the Dark Alliance series has sparked endless theories of the government trying to use drug smuggling to stop minority unrest. It's a myth, and this film pushes that same narrative by saying SEAL was working for the CIA, despite there being no evidence of such a thing. But the director of this movie, by the name of Doug Lehman, has a personal vendetta to push on us. He is the son of Arthur L. Lehman, who was one of the lead investigators into the Iran-Contra affair. Doug obviously has leftover hatred from the whole situation, but instead of using that to dig into the situation, he pushes a conspiracy theory. There is a good story to tell here. Seal was a career criminal who was the biggest drug smuggler during the initial crack cocaine crisis. He got rich quick and almost got away with his millions. Even when he was caught, he worked with the DEA as an informant. It was the Wall Street Journal who outed him because they have no care for people's lives and he was killed for being a narc. In a recent interview, Seal said he knew he was risking his life. The old saying, if you can't stand the heat, don't work in the kitchen. And now, the murder in Louisiana of the man who is perhaps the most important undercover drug informant ever. If you can't make a good movie out of that story, well, I guess you're just a bad storyteller. Lehman has stated in the press that this movie is supposed to be a fun lie, but that is not what the movie says. Frankly, I don't care about Lehman's intent. An artist is measured by what they convey, not what they wanted to convey. The mark of a bad artist is one who has to make excuses for their work. You never saw me. If this movie was intended to be a fun lie, it wouldn't say, based on a true story, it would actually say, a fun lie. It does attempt to have this plot of Seal videotaping his own story, and then the CIA taking it away, but that is just more conspiracism. The text of the movie is pure conspiracy theory. And that means it is something to not only avoid, but to denounce. 